Yeah. Whew. Sorry, big guy. Oh, are you just drinking? Is that is that milk? What are you drinking there? Oh, coffee. Oh, coffee. Get fair, dude. I got tea. Peppermint tea. You mean Red Bull? You're drinking Red Bull. <sighs> nope, I am not. I mean, this tea. This tea would be better if it was Red Bull, but it's not Red Bull. It is tea. I even put a heart on your sheet. If you can see that, there's a heart there. Podcast oh, questions for Kai. I'm honored. Yeah, well, uh, like you said, you've been doing school lately. I was going to ask you how that's been, man. Like, you're now officially a university student. You're no longer the scum of the earth. You're no longer a skier. You're no longer in high school. You've moved up the ranks. However, you're still at home. No, I'm, I'm still scum. I was only, only a uni kid for a bit. I'm out now, but yeah, it was pretty hefty. Just like four months. And it was just long days, chilling yeah. on Zoom for 14 hours, but I escaped out now. And yeah, so I'm not doing any, any more school until like summer. I'll do some summer classes. So are you fully but, done for the winter now? Yeah, I've got like two classes online, but it's, it'll be pretty chill, so mainly ski bombing it now. So you front front loaded all your courses in. Yeah. So you could come out and ski this year? You are you competing? If there is contest? Yeah, that's the plan. Like Okay, that's uh, what I thought. I was yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah, no, full full like normal season if there is comps. But you just I have know. to do two online courses throughout it. Which is not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty chill. Sick. Just so feel like, yeah. you're back home in West now. You're living with Mama Bear, Mama Smart, Papa Smart, yeah. and Ice Picky, Icy Ice Pick, Luke. That's Senior Lice. Is he there? Senior Lice, is he around? Yeah, he's out. He's at Ryland's right now. Yeah, dude, Ryland moved up. Everybody else moved out to West this year. I'm literally the only one. I'm stuck here by myself. You're, you're lagging. You gotta get out. I know. I got my pass, and I'm coming out for at least two weeks for a trip. I want to do some backcountry with you. I was going to ask yeah. you about that because you've been doing a lot of... Well, I wouldn't say, like, you've been doing a lot of touring, but also, like, throughout the summer, you've been doing a lot of backpacking and, like, a lot of hiking lately, and yeah. a lot of dirt biking, two spots and stuff, and, dude, that seems like, like, exactly what I want to do, so tell me about it, get me horned up, and then maybe you'll convince me to come, come make a trip out. Yeah, it was sick. Well, I mean, like, COVID rolled around, and, I mean, we weren't in full lockdown, you could still go out, so. Yep. Figured I'd buy a dirt bike, which I did, and then. Not a bad call. Not a bad call, and in West is just hella logging, which is has its goods and its bads. But for a dirt biker, it's great because it's just service roads like all yeah. over the place. So I just spent the summer like I was working landscaping in the weeks, but then I'd, after work or on the weekends, I'd just go out dirt bike and then hike up to huts, sussing out zones for the winter. Yeah, so just, you're getting into the backcountry more and more. You think? Yeah, you yeah, more each year, getting, getting a little more into it. Nice, sure. dude. I was, um, because all those cabins and stuff, like, obviously, like, they're just open to anybody who comes by, but what is it like? Like, do you know, like, where they're at, or, like, do you have to, like, book them or anything, like, in advance? Because, like, I know sometimes, like, you have to, there's, like, a limit how many people can, like, stay at one spot. Like, how do you kind of suss that out? Yeah, so it depends on the hut. Like, a lot of mainstream huts, so, like, if you look up Whistler Backcountry Huts, yeah, those are all built by organizations, and you have to book, and there's a limit, and with COVID now... You have to book out the whole hut, which, like, one hut has, like, 32 beds. So yeah, it's pretty it's expensive. But there's a stupid amount of, like, secret huts. Like, yep. everyone who's lived here for, like, 30 years has built their own hut somewhere. Yep. So the more you go out, like, I've just been discovering all these random huts do out you, there. Do you discover them yourself, or do you have people tell them, tell you about them? Because, like, I feel like if I discovered a random hut by myself, I'd feel bad for, like, poaching it on weekends. Like, what if no, the guy that owns, that made it came out and hung out, or came out and, like, was like, what are you doing here? Like, is that something you're worried about, or are you just, like, everybody's kind of okay with it? It depends on the hut. Like, I know there's a couple that people are, like, super secretive, and you don't want to go there, so I kind of just respect that. But a lot of the huts are, like, there's, like, levels of how known it is and, like, the ethics of using it. Yeah. And a lot of them are, like, when you build a hut in the backcountry, you kind of accept that anyone who goes to it will be allowed to use it. Yeah. So a lot of them, it's like first come, first serve. If you show up and no one's there, you just go to sleep. Yeah. If not, you build a snow cave and spend the night there. But Well, that's kind of what I was wondering because it was like if you show up and it's like – like if I built – if I did put all that work in to build a badass hut and I showed up yeah. and somebody, some 16 – or some young buck like you was sitting there just yeah. 
dicking around with his friends and I couldn't stay there, I'd be like, first of all, I'd be kind of stoked, but I'd also be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you need to go. So. Yeah, it depends. Like, I'd hope that people would just kind of give priority. Obviously, like, respect the guy who built the hut, but. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of, like, city people who just, like, don't really care about those, like, unwritten rules. Mm -hmm, for yeah, sure. There's a, there's a bunch, there's, like, a secret kind of code of ethics for huts. Like, if you tour out to a hut and there's, like, sledders who are there, the sledders are supposedly, they have to leave and, like, go out and tourists get priority, but all those yeah. rules are like, I mean, that kind of makes sense. It's a little easier to get yeah. in and out if you have a sled. Yeah. You guys, you and Ryland and the boys went out to one this year that had, like, a cliff jumping spot off of it, or a platform off it. That looks super sick. I don't know if you know what one I'm talking about, but... Oh, yeah, that, pla that platform's just, like, near by, by the highway. Oh, uh, so it's not even near a hut. Maybe it was, like, same weekend I saw some posts yeah. about it, and I thought it was up by yeah. the hut. We did go to a hut in the Duffy, though, with Ryland. Sick. That was sweet. Sick legs, yeah. yeah. How's that kid doing? I haven't seen him or talked to him in so long, man. You just had shoulder surgery? Him, uh, yeah, I haven't really seen him since probably that hut trip, but really? he's been kicking around. Like, yeah, he can't ski right now because of shoulder, but I think he'll be back soon. So yeah. I gotta, yeah, I gotta catch up with him. You still got the girl? Me. Still wiped yeah. up? Yeah, nice. wiped up. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Blew, blew everyone's minds. Blew everyone's minds. Yeah. Still going on. Um, yeah. Sick, dude. So... Obviously, that was kind of like summer. Did a bunch of hiking, black tusk and stuff like that. A bunch of cool spots. If I ever get out for the summer, we're gonna have to do some of that. But yeah, um, sure. this spring, you've been skiing a bit, like mostly backcountry or like mostly like a little bit of mountain stuff. Or like, I haven't seen a whole lot of park from from the kid this year. Oh, this year. Well, I mean, it just opened, so I've been schooling and like the park isn't fully set up yet. I mean, they've got a big jump now, but yep. it's been, like, either I was in school or it's been a pow day, so... Yeah, you don't go to the park on a pow day. It wasn't about going to the park on a pow day, yep. but... Yeah, I definitely want to get out and get the tricks back. Sick, so, man. Next Bluebird Day. Yeah. Park's, park's getting there. We got three jumps now, so... Oh, so, shit. Nice. We'll try and get filming. We got Skier Cole out here. Yeah, I know. I, I've know, seen it. Filmed. Yeah. He's on it. He's been getting you with the IG stories and stuff. I've seen those. Yeah, he's good to have around. I always forget to film, so he forces me to film. It's good. He's a big into the background. Should you probably get out and do some stuff with him this year, eh? Yeah, yeah, because he just bought a sled. Yeah, I heard. I saw that. Yeah. Big, big moves. Yeah. I don't think I'm financially there yet to buy a sled or even fix my car or even pay for a ski season, but you know. Yeah, well, you, you got the Patreon <laughs> One day. That, right? Dude, I got a whole eight. Anybody listening to this podcast should probably just help me out and join the Patreon, but I got a whole eight members now. That's sweet, yeah. Eight you, whole members, dude. What even is that? You just like, what do you offer on that? Quick plug on the Patreon. It's basically like OnlyFans, but for my uh, <laughs> my member, like yeah. just for me. And sweet. I mean, I haven't posted nudes in there yet, but we'll see. <laughs> down yeah. the line no dude recent like right now all i've got in is i got um i got like a workout plan the one i do like that i got from freestyle ontario and stuff like that it's like basically the same thing just to keep the kid like workout plans for all the people that are looking for like stuff for um skiing and like sports specific specific workouts and then i got a bunch of extra vlogs and like content and stuff like that i've been putting out two vlogs a month on there extra ones and then uh, putting out a podcast or two a month, like extra ones on there, not with guests, just kind of like me and Patty or going off or just me going off. And then like, um, I have been coaching like all the people that are in there. So like all the people that are in the Patreon, like they just ask me questions on how to do tricks. They send me videos and I like just hook them, like just send them videos and like explain how to do every trick and help them out as much as I can. And then hopefully down the line, like I was planning on doing some rail gyms at Mount St. Louis and stuff this year putting on events and I was going to like get all those got everybody in the Patreon to like come for free and do shit like that. Just going to mm. do some games of ski and stuff in there, but we'll That's see. Sweet. Don't yeah. The cult. I love it. Join the cult. Help yeah. the kid out. Get him yeah. to get him to 10 whole members. That's only two more. If two people from this podcast join, then my rod will be pushed and my day will be made. <laughs> you heard it here first, everyone. I heard it here up. first. I'm starting to have more fun with the podcast. I'm starting to get a little looser with it, not as like concerned. So it's kind of like, 
because it's kind of weird talking to like first of all dude like this is like a podcast i'm just doing with you like you're a good friend of mine but like, i've had a couple podcasts with people like i didn't know or haven't talked to like whatsoever beforehand and it's just yeah. like it's, it's weird talking to somebody the first time like and trying to do an interview style but way she goes We're, gotta just gotta binge joe rogan steal all his moves he's mastered it He's got to figure it out for sure, but... Yeah, I mean, you're doing well. You're, you're a very social, outgoing person. But... When I turn it on, man, I've kind of been a lone wolf lately. I've been doing my own shit. Like, I've literally been just training MMA seven days a week and then skiing and then... But, like, no one no one's home, like, where I ski. Like, even all the people my age that ski Mount St. Louis and stuff, I haven't been there yet this year, but they're all gone this season. And, like, maybe they'll only come weekends. Basically, I'm, basically I'm in Perry Sound by myself. Uh, just skiing and training, so it's getting boring. I I wanted to make a full like cover out to Whistler for like the whole season. Yeah, but that's uh, what I thought you were doing. I don't know why you. I mean, I guess with maximize, it's not a bad spot to be. But if you're just with maximize, it's not a bad spot to be. But I don't. I know myself, and I know if I make the trip out west, I'm not gonna be able to control myself, and I'm not gonna but, be as. I'm not gonna be as productive. I'm not gonna get as much stuff done. I'm gonna. Definitely maybe party a little bit too much and go off the rails a little too much. Not off the rails, but, like, not as, like, buckled down and productive as I want to be. Oh, so I can't train MMA in Whistler, which is, like, kind of become a big thing for me now. I got snap that's popping up on the screen, but, yeah, I don't know. I've kind of, kind of like, just going to play it by ear. I think I'll definitely make, like, one or two trips out. And then maybe I'll just make, like, one trip out and just never come back. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, that's, that's the way Whistler works. It is the way. I, it's a trap, man. It's, like, it's like the world's best trap. Yeah. It gets you there, and then you, like, stay there, and you love it. And you never leave. And you're probably not wrong to leave. Anyways, dude, um, what are you going to school for again? Business. Mm, smart little man. Uh, following, in my, following in my footsteps. You going to drop out after a year? No, no way. It might take me a while to finish it. But like you're not going to... schedule I'm doing, but... Yeah, how so is it extended out. then? Like, how how long is it supposed to take you with the schedule you're doing now? Yeah, it normally takes four years. Yeah. It'll take me probably five. That's not too bad. I think, I think six, like, you're not allowed to go over six, but... Because, yeah, I'm just doing it, like, in the off-season. But even if you push it to six, even if you push it to six, it's not bad. Yeah, like, no, it still takes a while, but, like... Whatever. Yeah. You guys, it's not really conflicting with skiing at all either. So. That's sick. Cause I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna be like in van most of the ski season, like just trying to like make trips up to go every once in a while. But you're gonna be fully in Wisp, which is super sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's sweet. That's unreal, dude. All right. I just gotta keep checking if this camera is working, cause every once in a while it shuts off. But um. Right. Yeah. So I guess let's get into it, man. Tell us, tell the kids on the podcast about. What life was like for young Kai growing up? Because that's like kind of what we do here. We kind of relive people's backstories, you know, talk about shit. And um, yeah, tell us what it's like growing up in Whistler as a Whist kid. Uh, first of all, your parents, for people that don't know, own Momentum Ski Camp. So skiing is kind of, well, I don't know how it came. I actually don't think we've ever had this conversation, but I don't know how you got into skiing, but I'm assuming it came pretty like organically and stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I grew up in a very ski oriented household. Yeah. My parents were big skiers, so Luke and I got going pretty early at, like, two. It's kind of like the trend with most Whistler kids, because all their parents are ski bums, so it's the the way of the road here. But, uh, yeah, I just grew up skiing my whole life. Started freestyle when I was, like, nine, doing little provincial comps and stuff. Did you ever do moguls or racing? Yeah, I was big into moguls for a while. Like, I went, like, at one point I was, like, 14. I didn't know whether I was going to go moguls or park like i got because i got into bc team for moguls before park oh no like the year before so i was fully considering it i was like oh like, you made the right choice i might, might i just say yeah no I, i'm i'm not a mogul skier but no like i like moguls it was fun but i can see myself doing that longer than five years yeah i also think you probably saved yourself a little bit of knee injuries maybe like yeah. maybe like two extra years on your knees going park so yeah. It's not bad. And then, yeah, so growing up, all that stuff, how long have – has your parents always owned Momentum or ran Momentum? Yeah, they started in, like, 92. So, like, growing up every summer, you were, you guys were up in the glacier, like, either shredding mogs or shredding the yeah. park? Yeah, like, 
when we were like eight or nine, we went for the first time. I think like it wasn't the whole time because we were pretty young, mm-hmm. and it wasn't the best learning environment originally. No, but, well, I mean, especially like back in the day, like the park scene's probably a little more loose and off the rails than it is now. Yeah, no, definitely now it's like kid oriented good yeah yeah like you can go when you're six now and it's a good environment but, yeah. yeah but freestyle skiing back in those days is a little looser and yeah. i mean it's kind of crazy that we were able to put on something like that with like because i don't know from like my point of view like freestyle skiing back then well didn't have as big of like uh audience or as big of like like i don't know like 15 20 years ago like what parents are gonna send their kid all the way to whistler for a summer camp to go ski like is it just mostly mostly yeah. like adults and stuff or like pros like that's kind of weird like how you can have enough I mean, people I, to support was, something like that it was pretty it's like i mean park was definitely still an, an emerging sport back then but like, yeah exactly even in the early thousands like in the 90s i don't think slope was even like fully realized yeah. as a discipline but then in the early thousands that was kind of when it like blew up it's dying down and, now yeah. We're a dying breed, I mean, for skiing, sure. Like, skiing in general was definitely, like, more people do it now, but back in the day, like, that was, it was a much larger event, like, real money in skiing back then. Yeah, yeah. Like, in the 80s and 90s compared to what it is now. Well, but. dude, like, the, the events back then, like, X Games back in the day, people were getting, like, 50K for an event. Yeah. And, like, you were, you, yeah, you're not going to get that now. And then sponsors yeah. were paying out way more back then, too. Like, in Simon Dumont era, like, I think I was on, I think it was his podcast, actually. I listened to one of his, and he said he made his first million or something, like, when he was, like, yeah. 16 or some shit or something like that. And I'm like, there's no no 16-year-old skier that's going to be making that, like, at this day and age, like, let alone many skiers in general that are going to, I don't even, there's probably a couple, but, like, very little. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's level. a few, there's a few out there, like, But not possible, a lot. But not a lot. Like, back then, like, all of them. Like, Ewan Olsen, I remember, like, yeah. he first made a million and bought a Lambo. <laughs> yeah, like, making tons of money. Money. yeah. I mean, he came from, like, a pretty wealthy family, but still, to be, like, buying a Lambo when you're, like, just a little kid on the park circuit. Yeah, sweet. exactly. It's pretty insane. And, like, nowadays, it's, like, clamoring to get, like, get enough money to do a full contest season to lose money on it. Yeah. Because, yeah, like... No, it's not a sustainable sport it's definitely not a sustainable yeah. sustainable uh business model either oh, for no. most oh, I mean, for most it's aspects a great, it's a great business model for freestyle canada but as an athlete as an athlete it's hard yeah for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah. but like even like but like even going from like local rail gems and stuff like you go to a local rail gym now you win first place you get like two hundred dollars in a free hat like back in the day you get like go to rail gym for like two thousand dollars and stuff like Horseshoe and like Mount St. Louis and Blue Mountain used to put on events with like five thousand dollar prizes and stuff like that. Oh really? Yeah, that's funny. yeah. Like couple, like not a couple of years ago, but back in the day. And now it's like go to a rail jam and you make like two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars for first place, but then you spend like fifty dollars on the pass that they the cheaper pass they give you, and then like twenty dollars in entry fees, and then you're like, if you don't win, you like lose like 80 to 100 bucks just to enter a contest it's like oh Oh, yeah i mean i guess it's a different environment because rail jams here are pretty good how they've been like when i was growing up well it wasn't really like treated as a full contest it was just like at night they'd set up a couple rails and it'd be Mm -hmm. more of just like a natural rail jam like the homies session yeah and they'd have some prizes like skis to give away but nothing crazy it was more of a just a gym sesh less money oriented comp but the East Coast is the rail rail center, so I guess that would make sense if there's a bigger ordeal over there. Yeah, for sure. One sec. I gotta find a charger for my iPhone because she's gonna die. I really was not like fully prepared for this, uh, this podcast, but you know. You gotta do what you gotta do, Kai. Yeah. I big think. influencer Bruce. Big influencer Bruce. Big, big influencer Bruce. Well, you know what? I realized that if I'm being 100% honest with myself, I'm not going to make any real money in skiing unless I go more of this route. Like, it's not very easy. Like, yeah. Sponsors nowadays, I th- I've talked about this on the podcast a couple times, but sponsors on the on um, sponsors this day and age genuinely don't care too much if you're going to, like, 
win a World Cup, but if you can like sell their product and sell their stuff like through social media or just through your like what you have in general, then they care a lot about that more, in my opinion. Yeah, I know for sure. Like, if you can do so both, many, then you're set. There's so many like unreal skiers from Wiss who just no one knows about. Oh, dude! But it's it's all just like it's insane. Instagram followers that's the new digital currency to leverage sponsors i guess but yeah and i mean it is like it is kind of like what you got to do but, if, but yeah it fully makes sense from it, a company's point of view yeah you like, don't want to pay somebody yeah. yeah well i don't have that much going now but like i have been doing more and more and more and like mm-hmm. i don't know like it makes sense like if you have a podcast that a lot of people listen to like obviously this podcast hasn't blown up or anything yet but like I, there's a decent amount of listeners, but like you have podcasts that have like hundreds of thousands of listeners, tens of thousands of listeners, yeah. or you can have one person who wins a world cup and 50 people see him on the podium at that event. And then that's all that ever see them that ever yeah. see it again. Right. Like if you really think about it, like a world cup podium, maybe you have a hundred people that are there to see it. And then you don't post about it on your Instagram and like, maybe like nobody like really put no news sites really cover it. Cause it's not like. A big thing in the news. It's not like you won the hundred meter dash in the Olympics. Yeah. So like, it's not really bringing a lot of brand awareness unless you win the Olympics, and that would be a different story. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. And I think like a lot of skiers are realizing it that it's not like as so much of companies rewarding you for your ability. It's more them like seeking out athletes who can like really accelerate their brand and promote it well yeah which is their job because their, yeah. their job is to, gro- is, to sell to sell course, their yeah. stuff yeah but it also kind of sucks because it sucks for some people like that don't want to play the game because like you do it's like one of those things like you don't you have a choice but like it's also very hard to go the underground route and like make a living off skiing yeah yeah you got a you got a cave like you I got ca- TikTok a couple of days ago. I you're I a TikTok master. Although I will say your TikToks are the best TikToks. Before you were posting like purely ski content, or not purely ski content, but where you're just like posting whatever you felt like and making your really funny TikToks, it, it cracked me up. There's oh, some there's I, some yeah, good stuff. Like, my old TikToks they're all private. Yeah, well but. you have to because you have to be aware you have to be aware of like brand and brands and stuff and what they. Like, if your sponsors, like, not saying that you're posting anything bad, but, like, if your sponsors were to see something that was posted bad, like, just for any athlete in general, well, we saw what happened to Kieran and Devin Fagan. We can bring that oh, up yeah. on the podcast. You're going to get canceled, and yeah. then you're really not going to have any way of supplying yourself or supplementing yourself. So, yeah, yeah you definitely have to be careful nowadays and kind of just mm-hmm. don't be a dick, I guess. Where she goes. Yeah. Enough of that nonsense. Um, So... Who was your biggest idol growing up skiing, Kai? Who was K- little Kai Kevin. Smart? Little Kai Smart, he was ripping the park. He was ripping the backcountry. He was hanging out with friends. He was waking up in Wisc, taking the bus or walking to the mountain. Can you walk from your house? No. Yeah, yeah, it's like 15 minutes. Oh, sick, yeah. yeah. Who, who are you thinking about? What videos were you watching before you go up? All that good stuff. Um, probably growing up with the biggest hype. I don't know if you know Down to Film. Yep. Zach Moxley, like yep. those, those edits of Bloody Ink and Gunplay. Yep. Were, if you don't know the like, Gunplay edit, like yeah, yeah, that was like the go-to every morning before skiing. You just watch that, get super fired up. So like all the local riders, just to be able, because like you're seeing them every day ripping black line. Yep. So that was definitely the biggest like inspiration for me growing up. That's super the Wils- sick. Yeah. What are so you gonna Wilson say, and, and Wilson? They kind of dropped off, but... Yeah, well, go. that's that's based off other reasons, but yeah. <laughs> we, we All of them, like, up. B. Reed, Brent, Brendan Reed. Super sick, know. dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's sweet. Just always out there, like, be hiking a rail in, like, 80K winds in the rain and in the t-shirt. Super sick to see. Like, yeah, they're all... After it. All the local guys, because that's what's sweet about Whistler. It's just, like, you're surrounded by all these heavy hidden skiers. So that was a huge inspo growing up. Dude, even at like, um, local little Hills now, like you go and stop by or you're just skiing and you'll see people that are just lighting up tricks and you're like, who the hell is this guy? I've never yeah. seen him before. And you're like, it was unreal. My goal is to be that, like, is to put out some, this year I want to put out some edits that like kids like me growing up the day or you growing up the day can like yeah. watch every day before they go to the ski hill and get super stoked to go 
just shredding stuff. Yeah. You want to know something funny? What? My uh, my gunplay edit, the one I used to always listen to, was Roots by Max Moffat, and he's in the other room. Just talking to it. Yeah, that was the one I would rip every day at Louie. Like, I'd make sure in the chalet I'd watch that, like, this all seven minutes of it before I went out skiing. And that was the one. I want to make I want to make edit like that. Now, now you're living with them. Well, no, That's now good. I'm sleeping on my a couch in my sister's apartment thing that they're renting. But, I mean, we're almost there. Almost, yeah, it's good enough. Good enough, yeah. Exactly. That's funny, though, how that grows up. Or how that goes on. So... Kai, competing, freestyle skiing, traveling, me, you, and all the boys, everybody that we ski and hang out with. We've been to some pretty cool places. We've done some pretty cool stuff. Have a lot of stories. A lot of them we can't share for obvious reasons. A lot of them we can share for obvious reasons. But what's the coolest place you've been to for skiing and the best trip you've been on? The coolest place? Yeah. Would be Holland. So Holland? This is like, you went to Holland? Yeah, so my mom's from Holland. and Okay. This wasn't like competing or anything, but I was there like visiting my grandma and they've got this indoor like ski slope there and Luke and I like rented some race skis because that's all we had and that was like the craziest place. They had a little park, like a down flat down. We were like session. So the coolest place you, coolest place you ever been was an indoor ski place on racing skis. So wild. Well, because Holland's (laughs) just this like flat place, farmland and all of a sudden you're like walking into this indoor ski slope skiing on race skis like it was just it was pretty surreal but uh i That's mean aside from that i mean yukon like yukon's a pretty interesting place like i i found that that was an experience my first year at yukon especially you that was when i first met you and yeah you kind of uh exposed me to another side of skiers i guess you've you've branched out of that personality but what oh that that personality that was the old bruce <laughs> This is the... Yeah, old Bruce. This is the new Bruce. That was when I was first exposed to the the Bruce Ryland, Kyle Doherty trio. Yeah, that was back in the OG Team Ontario days. And, I mean, as I like to say, we like to have a lot of fun. But it was uh, definitely interesting. I was... My first time getting exposed to that side of skiing was in the Yukon as well. And I got exposed to none other than Riley Culver. Oh, yeah, I missed that year. Yeah, <laughs> Riley, the Riley heard. Culver year was insane. I've heard Al- Ryan Culver, Riley Culver, and Alex Zastry. And yeah. somehow I got roped into hanging out with them a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it was interesting, that's for sure. Yeah, we should probably end this convers- that conversation there. but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just got to turn the camera back on because it, it turns off after 30 minutes. That's why okay. I don't like using this one. It just, like, shuts off. After 30 minutes, but I think I got it whopping again. Maybe, maybe, but yeah. We'll we'll end that conversation before it gets too out of hand. There's a lot of cool stories, a lot of interesting stories. I'm sure every skier, look at this. The big cam, big Kai in the cam. Ooh. Give the the ladies a little teeth bite for them. Wow. Sexy. Uh, But... (laughs) Oh, so cringe. You gotta cut that out. I will. I'll cut it out. Well, I'll just like black it out, and then we'll leave it for audio only, and then they can just imagine what what just happened. Yeah, they can just. They can yeah. think of every TikTok star, and then put Kai's face on them. <laughs> yeah, but you can just cover that up with some some TikTok I mean, guy. I don't know. Yeah, but like every, real. I feel like every place I go to is just like my new favorite spot. Yeah. Like, especially the states. Like going to the states. Like going to Aspen for the first time. Park City, that was crazy. I was so blown away by how small Park City was. Dude, we because we went last year, about, me, yeah. you, and uh, I guess all the boys that were on the ski team that year, it was me, you, Chase, uh, who else was there? Uh, who else was on the team there? I'm trying to remember. There's more. Nick was hurt. Nick was out. Nick, he was there, though, at Aspen. Oh, but Park City. Park City, no. When we were in that little dungeon place, yeah. Dude, that was the funniest place. It was uh, Luke, you and Ice Picker, too. Yeah. Ice Picker was yeah. there. Yeah, and then Park City, because Park City, you watch all the videos. And, like, growing up, I watched all the videos of Park City. Yeah. You watch all the videos. We've never been. First time going to Park City. I thought, like, from every person I've heard, I heard that it's a huge mountain. The entire mountain is just all park. Like, yeah. urban legend, and it's, like, the size of, like, the outback. Still super sick, but, like, complete opposite of what I, what I expected. Yeah, it, it was sweet, like, fast laps. Like, the rails were dope, but just rolling up, like, because the, the mountain behind it's, like, pretty big. Yeah, for sure. Archer's tiny, and we were like, that's not Park City. Like, 
that's like the baby park. Like, yeah. no way, that's Park City. But then we roll up, and of course, it's like Simon and T Wall just filming their edit. Like, oh, dude, dude. like the culture there is so awesome. That was so funny because it was literally our first lap in Park City ever. Yeah. And we were like trying to snake up the chair without having to pay for a pass for the day, which we managed to do successfully. You can't come after us now because it's too late in advance. Yeah. But um, we literally roll up to the chairlift and we're like, this can't be the park. And then literally the first two people that get on their chair in front of us are Simon Dumont and Tom Walsh. And it's like, what the <laughs> fuck? It was insane. Yeah. And then we just came from, because we had a contest in uh, at Woodward Copper. Uh, or was it? Is it Cop? No, it's no, no, Park Copper, City. Be, yeah, Park City. Park City, yeah. Uh, Park City, Woodward. And we were like in between, like instead of doing a big air training day, we went there, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Or we did half, yeah. half and half. Yeah, we did like morning or something. Yeah. But I remember me and you because like, Woodward for I've never been I don't think you've ever been to Woodward before right no yeah we show up and it's like literally like every like teenager's dream like like a sandy teenager like me you just like skate park yeah it's insane there's like a gymnastics floor a huge foam pit a parkour thing six skate park uh like 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 literally everything yeah and me and you were just insane Dude, me and you would just sesh rollerblades. We just go uh, throw rollerblades on and like yeah. sesh rollerblades like before our slope runs and like comp <laughs> runs. Like, dude, I remember being like rushing to get my ski boots on just to get to like training on time because I was too busy rollerblading and like hitting all the foam pits in the skate park and yeah. stuff. And you're skating and shit. And we we're doing trying to do flat ground backflips. Oh, I, remember, yes. I remember trying to yeah. win those. Yeah. But dude, it's like yeah, the place is insane. It's like every kid's dream. You roll up like. You could just spend 24 hours there. Like, that's what we were doing. We just, like, seize every minute we were there. Like I have never had so much fun before yeah. an event. I think I had more fun rollerblading in that little, like, <laughs> mini pipe than actually, like, at the contest. But the contest was yeah. super sick, and the hill was super sick, too. Uh, yeah. But that's, like, everybody. I w- that's my dream to own something like that one day. Just, like, have that in my backyard. Kind of, like, a maximize mixed with one of those. Yeah. It'd be super unreal. All right, dude, we've clapped out 35 minutes. I got like a couple more questions for you, but we'll right. we'll run through them and we'll keep talking to your beautiful face before my camera dies fully. It'll die eventually, but way she goes. Um, so WSF SSF WSSF. You filmed a video for it called Los mm-hmm. Amigos. You guys want it? Yeah. Tell us That's about sweet. that. Tell us about that. Tell the kid and all the listeners about that, because that's interesting. Yeah, so WSSF is the Whistler or World Ski and Snowboard Festival in Whistler, which has been going for a long time. They used to they used to have a huge park comp and pipe comp with like all the pros that would come out, and then that kind of like dwindled down to just a big air. But they've always every year had this huge film festival called Intersection, yeah. where you have like teams of skiers and filmers and you have seven days to shoot and film a movie and so i had done it for three years the first two years with a group called gg dub and then in the third year which would have been yeah two years ago i joined with los amigos the boys like yeah all it's basically all the ubc skiing board guys like dylan runner and axel runner they kind of spearheaded that and kobo and yeah we filmed for a week i missed a comp I think there's a comp in Mammoth, yeah. and I just I had to film this instead. Good call. Pretty yeah, I was stoked on that decision, and uh, yeah, we just filmed for a week. I mainly just filmed park, and we took the dub, so that was sweet. That's so, awesome, dude. What's it like to put together? Like, I mean, I know you were like, there's a lot of you guys that did it and stuff, but what was it like to see like a final project like that come together? Because that was like, I mean, everybody, every kid like growing up park skiing and stuff has made like their own like edit. But no, it's different when you make like something like that. It's like a movie with like a lot more. A lot more goes into it, and to see the final like product come together, and then it gets played in like. Does it? Do they play it in the theater there, or do they play it at? Um, yeah, I it's in, like it. it's the conference center. So yeah, it's, like, exactly. A huge area with like mm-hmm. I don't know, it must be like a thousand or more people watching. But yeah, what's that like? What that, that experience has got to be pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's like definitely a surreal moment because you just roll up like they call you on stage and you just 
standing there like on stage with a bunch of people but I mean in terms of like the process of production I was just kind of I was just an athlete getting film yeah for sure so I didn't really go through the editing process but all the boys editing killed it spent like 48 hours straight just overnight on the computer because it's such a grind to do that all in seven weeks yeah because you only have seven weeks to do it right That's or seven the, days yeah, sorry, seven yeah. days yeah to do it yeah do you have seven days to film and and yeah. edit it yeah film and edit holy shit because you guys had a lot of backcountry shots in there too that's like not a yeah. lot like yeah you guys had some in there and that's not easy to to film those let alone put those out in seven days yeah and it's really weather dependent too so the mm -hmm. first two days of like the seven day period well, that sucks, guys. I am. I apologize because my my phone has died. She just ran right off the fucking rails. Let me see what I can do here. I unplug it back in, and we'll be back to you in a second with more Kai. Hey, dude. I I'm sorry you cut out there. We had some problems. The phone died. This has been the most unorganized podcast of my life. All good. I promise it's not always like this. One time you're gonna have to come down to. Louis, do a weekend trip and you can come hang out at my house and we'll do one in studio. Yeah. I was just went while well, my phone charged up. I had a, I had my phone plugged in and it died while I was plugged in, but I had it plugged into my computer, so I got it plugged into like a big charger now, so it should charge fast enough. I went and mucked some chicken in the intermission though. Yeah. A little, little chicken muck in the intermission. I'm glad you stayed yeah. on, stayed around yeah. to rip the rest. Sorry about that, dude. But I was pretty late there, hey? It's like nine o'clock now, yeah. It's like usually like most of the podcasts I do people in different time zones so kind of just like go with what works for other people but it's it's good it's chill it's nice to do like well it's not nice to do it in different time zones but like sometimes it works out all right usually I'm not home till this time like because I'm doing MMA till like nine thirty and then like it works well because like the other person doesn't have to stay up late but. Yeah, anyways, we're talking about WSF and all that stuff, and you just just saying how like sick it was to like uh, be at something. I don't, well, like I guess be on a stage like that and have like put together a project. Yeah, that um, was sweet, and definitely got me fired up to do a bunch more. Like, obviously, got canceled last mm, year, but yeah, this year there's a bunch more people that just moved to WIS, so I'm definitely working on getting a bunch of projects out there, like more larger scale, like. Mm -hmm. higher quality movies and short edits and stuff so yeah some short edits would be sick because you guys yeah. with everybody that's there now that's park skiing and like mm -hmm. i mean obviously you don't want to just do park skiing i know you probably want to do some backcountry stuff too but you guys could put together some pretty insane like even like five minute edits like you guys could put together a yeah. gunplay edit for sure yeah yeah for sure like everyone's out here and like everyone's stoked to film everyone's trying to produce content so i think it'd be sweet to get together mm -hmm. like i've got a couple ideas in mind like yeah exactly got a huge like armada crew yeah at least like four of us so thinking of doing like an armada edit here and another larger one with all the boys and yeah so definitely gonna try and create some some higher quality projects just the old the old iphone instagram edits i'm the king of that man the amount i'm gonna put out this year is yeah. gonna be unreasonable oh yeah I'm going to put out so many Instagram edits, people are going to want to gouge their eyes out. But um, I also want to put out a lot of bigger edits this year. It would be cool to get like to the point where, like, hopefully by the point next year, I'm at the point with vlogs and like podcasts and skiing and stuff, where I can have like somebody who's like a filmer that comes and tags along and like maybe like all my sponsors pull together and pay them to like just help put out the weekly like episodes of the vlog and the podcast and stuff and like content. And then we, we can have like me and you and like all the boys that are on WIS, like go do like a two week, I'll go do a two week trip out or go move out for like however long. And we can actually put out some like really like higher end stuff and like really put the time in to do it properly. Cause like right now, like me by myself, like I don't have the bandwidth to do as much as I want to. And I'm not good enough with editing and stuff to like put together like projects and stuff like that or filming mm -hmm. in general. But it'd be really sick to be able to do stuff like that. Have I told yeah, you about I think my? That'd be sweet. Yeah. Like so many people who are doing those vlogs, like in biking and skiing, like sponsors love that, and I know like a lot of companies got behind that. So. Yeah, for sure. And but like I want to do it like in a very enter. Like I don't know. I don't yeah, want to like. Not so corporate. I, I want to do it, like, obviously, like, you have to do it corporate and, like, reasonably corporate just 
Because, like, otherwise you're not going to have sponsors and stuff on board with projects like that if they're not corporate. But I want to be able to, like, just kind of, like, just do do yourself, like, do yourself. That Wouldn't that be fun? Like, do it, like, in your own, like, style. Like, because we're all, like, such characters. Like, literally, if you put a camera, like, if you made a TV show of, like, our ski team, like, the Grand Pollock ski team of Degenerates, if you had, like, a full-on TV crew... Like it would be a hit hit TV show. It would be like a it would be a hit TV show, and we could still keep it PG. Like, yeah. but just like it would just because everybody on the team and everybody that, I mean, most skiers in general, but like all of us are just such characters and like have entertaining and like wild ideas and just like kind of just go like with the flow or do whatever like you feel like, and it just makes for very interesting content and really good times overall. Like I have the most fun when I'm on ski trips, hanging out with everybody and just kind of like obviously like skiing hard and still working hard and doing stuff like that, but like just kinda of like just hanging out and just like having fun and sending it with the boys. Yeah. So it was good. Well I mean look at look at Chug Life. Did you ever watch Chug Life? I have done my research on Chug Life, although he is not corporate enough. He would uh he would Chug get Life. banned in today's today's Chug day. Chug Life age. was pretty successful with that. Back in the day, yeah. That was, I, that was a good yeah. I mean, I don't think you could get away with doing it to that point oh, nowadays yeah. at all, but it would be really cool to be able to do it to that point nowadays. It's kind of funny because, like, it's one of those sports, like, where it's an action sport and it's, like, um, kind of, like, kind of, like, in that genre, but it's kind of moved towards the corporate side. Like, if you look at dirt biking, like, all the pro dirt, bar- dirt, pro dirt bikers have, like, girls in, like, topless bikinis and stuff in all their videos and they're just, like, rock star lifestyle and, like, just, yeah. like doing whatever they want and then skiing edits it's like you kind of have to be somewhat respectable to be brought covered by those big brands whereas like you see like all the big like athletes and like dirt biking or stuff like that they're not as corporate yeah that's just the uh, it's just dirt biking as a sport i think i think it's just dirt biking dirt as a sport community. the redneck the redneck community stands behind it and they just support them no matter what metal militia all the way flat caps turn sideways monster in hand ready to roll yeah but it would be really fun to put out content to that degree as well although mm-hmm. you would have to be careful with what you said you can't can't get canceled nowadays maybe that's maybe that's what your patreon's for that maybe that is what my patreon is i also thought about doing an only fans like super undercover like <laughs> <laughs> but i was like i'm gonna get i'm gonna get found out one day <laughs> i'm gonna get found out one day it'd be kind of fun but like i think i think all the boys here would pitch in for your only fans bruce See, like, if you guys supported me, that's all I need, like, in my life. Like, I don't need sponsors. I just need the boys, the Whistler boys to support my OnlyFans, and I'll be set. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, there's, like, even a bunch of, like, UFC fighters and stuff that have, like, these girls have uh, OnlyFans and stuff like that. And, I mean, I guess UFC is a little different because, like, generally as a company, they don't really care what their athletes put out. Oh, yeah, not at all. Not at all. But, like... It be, that's why I always thought it was kind of cool to be spot, like to be an athlete in like a sport like that because like you're literally open to doing whatever you want like in terms of like your like income based off of your athletic and what, how you perform and stuff you're not really judged upon that which I think is pretty cool well I mean I mean like you could do that in, in skiing it's just kind of you, like the whole the you whole could of, of like digital media nowadays it's you you wouldn't you're have canceled if you're disrespectful. So yeah, but like good to have a good digital image for sure. Yeah, you have to keep your digital image clean. But like, mm-hmm. like as a skier, if you were like, let's say the top female skier, and you made an OnlyFans and ha- publicly had that on your Instagram or something like that, like this is something you do. Like you probably wouldn't have a whole lot of sponsors. You would make a lot of money, but you wouldn't yeah, have a whole no, lot of sponsors. You, you might pick up a few sponsors just in a different area. Genre. Did you see that Pornhub was yeah. sponsoring athletes at one point? No, I didn't. What? It was like a year ago. They had like a uh, Pornhub had, um, uh, I forget. It was like a sponsor. Like you put in like a full on like form and submitted a request to be a sponsored athlete. And they picked like 10 people. I don't know what happened to those 10 people, but they picked them. I definitely wow. filled out, filled it out. But I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. I was like, that's interesting. I mean, it's probably not the most, like it was kind of just more for jokes, but I thought it was funny. Yeah. No, I mean like it all. Yeah. Like exactly. If you can do that, like there's bunch of skiers like sponsored by beer companies and yeah it just, it just depends on like what kind of brand you're working with for sure resonate with that like grungy dirt bike lifestyle and, vibe, and other ones are more like yeah and about that which is understandable yeah it makes sense for sure and like especially when you're at a point like what we're doing like 
I mean, we're trying to compete to get to like an Olympic level or something like that. And for sports that are in the Olympics, like I don't dirt biking is not in the Olympics, um, yeah. but like sports with like national teams and stuff, they definitely have, you have to make sure you have a clean uh, image for that. Like you can't be like a top represent a representative of your nation and be on only fans <laughs> all day. Like it's just, yeah. pro- they're just not going to let, let that yeah. fly no matter how good of an athlete you are. And that's, yeah. that's definitely fair and that's respectable, but it's just interesting. And I mean, like same with professional jobs, I guess, like if you're in a, a profession, like a, in corporate or something, you can't have uh, things like that surrounding you. Usually, sometimes you can get away with it, but yeah, yeah. unless you're a stock trader, investment investment banker, but or Dan Blazarian, yeah, yeah, you're set. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right, Kai. Well, I've been asking everybody this question. I always say this on the podcast. Maybe I'll come up with a couple more questions for you after this. But where do you see yourself in five years, and uh, what does the future look like for Little Kai Smart? Oh, I've I have no clue. Um, well, you got five years of school, but let's pretend that doesn't count. Yeah, no, school is just like a side thing. I don't know. I mean, everything skiing related is like all up in the air, but this year, like depending on how I can do, it'd be sweet to get the tricks and go on to like next gen national team and see where that goes. For sure. I can do that. And then, yeah, like I'll definitely be skiing in some way or form whether that be competing or filming, but I'm definitely going to push this competition route for the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure, dude. Because, Do it while you uh, can. I got I to gotta get to maximize the, the tricks people are throwing are really escalating, so I got I to gotta step up. Dude, get those Get the all-way quads, you know, to <laughs> to match comp skiing nowadays. But It's insane, man. Yeah. Like, even what I've seen at Maximize this, like, past, like, eight or nine i guess it's like been six days but uh, the past six days it's been pretty pretty crazy what people are doing and just like you can see just like taking it from like straight up from an airbag to like snow like the benefit it has but it is a lot and yeah i mean i don't know like i would watch like oh because i made a video on like top 10 best big air tricks or whatever on youtube and i was like going through like trying to find tricks for it and i looked at some of the tricks and i'm like holy hell like burkra did a trip 18 mute Dub yeah. Bio 18 Mute, and there's, like, Andre Getley did Switch Triple Misty. I mean, like, there's just, like, some crazy accesses and tricks that are being done nowadays. It's, like, yeah, the, the level of jumping has gone to, gotten to the point where it's, like, well, you probably should land. Otherwise, you're probably going to be out for a year. Like, Yeah, it's crazy, like, what Fib, Fib Magnin, probably pronouncing yeah. that wrong, but what he's been doing is just insane, like, the switch trip and like switch trip 10 yeah and dub bio 18 yeah dub bio 18 like just the landing on that was just insane i that was the first video of this season that i watched that dub bio 18 where i watched it come because you know the side view of that him doing that jump i watched it and i was like and he like how deep he goes and how much impact comes around i'm like if you get lost in the air on that and you land on your head you're not you're not okay Like that, yeah. that one like really put it in like that trick really put it into perspective for me. I was like, this is not like if you land like what well, you land on your side and like you get lost, you land on your side and like you might break an arm. That this is like you land on your side and you're like in a hospital for a long time. Yeah, like you're going 150 yeah. feet, huge drop. Yeah, missing most of the landing. Yeah, like all all the content coming out of Stubai, like is insane. The faction edit. Yeah. Yeah. That was insane. Buddy uh, Matej. Dude, that guy's an animal. I watched... Yeah, did you see the video on his Instagram of him doing a switch triple front flip? Like, over that little bump? No. I'll send it to you. He, he did a switch there. triple front... It's like, no, it's just like a random video on Instagram. It's like a cloudy day. He does like a switch front flip, a switch five, a couple other tricks, a switch ten. And then all of a sudden he does a switch triple front flip on like a 25 foot jump. <laughs> Like, a literally 25-foot jump, just tucked, Dude. like, as hard as he can, and stomps it. I'm like, <laughs> he's insane. Like, there's no yeah. landing either. Like, and he's, he's super steep, too. That's what's dope about him. Like, yeah, he's got he's a lot of style. Like airbag jock, like, yeah, he's got style. He's not, yeah, he's not just another, like, aerialist skier, which is sick. Yeah. I was going to have him on the podcast, but he doesn't speak good enough English to do a full 45 or hour-long podcast with me soon. Yeah, what is it? What's it, like, does he speak French, or... 
I don't know. I don't I mean, really. Uh, I don't know if people speak down there. I'm not cultured enough, guy. I haven't I been out. Know where from, yeah. Can you believe it? I haven't been out to Europe to go skiing yet. Not once. You gotta get out there. Have you been? Hawaii. Maybe yeah. I was. I mean, I was planning on doing a big. Cause I was supposed to take a gap year. Yeah. And then they like declined my deferral request, so that got. Oh, is that what happened? I yeah. thought you were gonna take a gap year. I was wondering why you went to school. Well, yeah, my original plan I was gonna go to New Zealand for like a month. Yeah. And then buy a sled and do a bunch more like. Stuff international out there. traveling, yeah. but I mean, either way, that all would have got shut down anyways. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to go to the States, you think, for comps? Uh, it sounds like team? what they're doing with the Norams this year is they're going to put all the ones in Canada and then all the ones in the States, and then they're going to separate the two and then uh, pick a winner at the end. So mm-hmm. there'll be States-only Norams, uh, Canadian-only Norams, and then go from there. So yeah. I don't think so. I mean, I would like to go to the States just to like ski with all the boys out there and stuff. And like, I'd love to do a trip and hit some different mountains, but I don't want to quarantine twice. Yeah. And money wise, it probably doesn't make sense. So, yeah. I mean, it'd be, yeah, it'd that's be the fun. Thing. It's, it's really just that quarantine on the way back. Cause you don't have to quarantine when you get in, but. Well, we don't, if the rules change, maybe not, maybe, but yeah, yeah. you don't have to quarantine on the way in, but on the way back, it's still two week quarantine. And then like, I, th- I think it. I think it might be like a quarantine on the way there. Actually, depending on what state you go to, but I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, maybe it's by state. But yeah, because like that was definitely like a thing that I was taking into consideration. I wanted to do the Tom Walsh Steel City Showdown this year too, like just for sh- just for fun. I feel like it would be the most fun event ever, and I was like yeah. hoping that a contest would line up where I could just like stay an extra week and do that. But I think that'll all be canceled too. Yeah. Do you have any desire of hitting urban, or are you purely yeah. thinking backcountry and park for now? No, yeah, I, I have a bungee, so I definitely want to, I almost bought a winch too, yeah. but uh, there's not a lot of urban spots in Wiss. Like there's none. Like a couple, there's like a couple rails, but they're not that sick, so yeah. maybe I, I have a Can West Pass this year, so probably going to do a BC trip and bring the bungee and That'd be sick. fine on the way, yeah. Yeah, Van never gets enough snow, eh? Yeah, no, they're like, when it does snow, it's sweet. Like, there's a lot of, because nothing's really capped. Yeah. So. But they don't yeah, ne- usually get enough snow. We've been getting a lot of rain. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Been surfing this summer at all? Yeah, I was in Tofino for, like, three weeks, surfing a bunch. That was dope. I'm Trying mad. to get back out in, like, January. Mad jealous of that. That's sick. Yeah. yeah that's that's got to be the vibe. I haven't been in Tofino yet, so next time I come out, me and you are going backcountry. We're hitting up some huts, and we're going surfing in Tofino. And then yeah. maybe I'll make it out for the yeah. winter this year and we'll go ski some backcountry too. I'll show you the BC lifestyle. Convert you. Dude, I've already been converted. I'm just trying not to get converted again. I, I know what I'm in for and I know the fun times I have when I'm out there. Mm-hmm. But I got a, I got bigger fish to fry in the meantime think and then about, I'll make my think time. about doing your podcast out at a backcountry hut. Just pillow fields behind you. The Pretty. vlogs you can make. Pretty insane. It's really, it's like, it's a content haven for you. You love it. It would be. That's why I want to make like a week, couple week trip out there. Like not, like not just to make content, but just to shred with the boys and have a really good time. Cause like I, dude, I'm going to miss, like if I don't get a ski with you guys, like in terms of like just contests, like maybe it's not a go this year. Who knows? But if I don't get to hang out with the boys and go skiing at least a couple laps, I'm just stuck ripping Louis by myself and like occasional maximized trips. I'm going to lose my mind. So, yeah. but I got that pa- I got that five hundred dollar pass or whatever with Whistler Freestyle, and I oh, think uh, I think I'll be coming out. I just don't know when. I haven't planned it out yet. You have to let me know when it's good. Yeah, like January, February will be sick or spring. Do both. I was gonna do both. I was gonna do spring for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like midwinter for like real skiing and yeah. also like full black line because they're gonna be closing Blackham early. Oh yeah. Ending Whistler, so if you want to come for jumps, you got to hit that date, which is sometime in April. Sick. And they shut down block line, so. Well, I'll have to stay on top of that, and I'll, yeah. I'll make sure I get that. Yeah. All right, Kai, anything else you want to touch base on on the podcast before we dip out? I mean, you did an hour. We had complications with the phone, the cameras, all the nonsense that I'm supposed to be in charge of. This is why I'm supposed to have a podcast person to help me deal with this nonsense. But uh, thank you for sticking to it. Do you got anything you want to add? Anything you want to say? Subscribe to Bruce's OnlyFans. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Bruce Olden for president 2021. OnlyFans coming in hot. Only pictures of my toes, my pinky toes specifically. Maybe my big thumb if I'm feeling 
really outgoing yeah. today, but yeah. What the ski community needs. It's what the ski community needs, and it's not what they want, but it's what they need. Exactly. <laughs> All right, dude. I'm going to end the podcast there.